Dean's my best friend. I trust him with my life. Kind of the point, right? Makes a good makes a good enough opportunity. That's not very nice, Ty. He's right, though. If Dean ever did plan something like that, I probably wouldn't question it until it's too late. Thank you for que making me question my closest relationships. <laughs> I'll never trust again. Well, shit, this is a wake-up call. Dave, you ever try anything like that on me, then I'm fucked. I chuckled, a combination of flattered and worried as to how serious Ty was being. So, that leaves, uh... Roswell. Hoss. Probably not Benson. Look, we're down to the exact suspects that I already was leaning on. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, really? Just those two? Unless we want to include you and Tyson on that list. Fuck is wrong with you? I said I didn't do it. That's how this works. <laughs> you just <laughs> say it. But you could have. Nothing happened, but who's to say that you didn't at the time want me dead? Trust me, if I wanted anyone dead, they'd know. They'd know, and then I'd just fucking kill them. I shrank a little, taking a step back from Ty to be closer to Sal, almost using him as a wall. Shit, no, that's not what I... I agree. Huh? That's the problem, though. The intent on killing someone is going to come out of nowhere, if at all. None of us seem to be... looking to kill anyone. At least no one that I've spoken to. But there's only... uh... Well, I guess it's eight now, right? Right. But I haven't met the owner of the house, so... I doubt it could be them. Unless I'd run into them while sleepwalking, but you guys caught me before that could happen. I nodded slowly, scratching my neck. Guess go talk to Roswell or Haas? Maybe one of them wants to do you in. Well, we can possibly rule out Roswell, right? No. Well, no. Yeah, why? <laughs> what, why would you say that? <laughs> we can. Have you seen his face every time he talks? <laughs> well, the control panel, right? I don't think he'd be able to reach it. How Grab short is he? Grab a chair. <laughs> yeah, sure. Short, short people can come up with solutions to basic problems, but also like how he's been cooking of, in this place the whole time. He can reach much, a countertop. Like how much of a height disparity is there, and how high is the control panel that everyone except Roswell can reach it? That seems extremely unlikely in the basic like height difference range of human beings. Normally, I don't know. Sal looked from the ground to the panel, almost measuring the distance. Literally measuring the distance. Which leaves... Haas? Locking someone in a freezer doesn't seem like his style either. You really think so? Seems like a safe way to murder someone. Yeah. And you reckon that cat would be likely to do that given the anime he watches? <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't watch the right kind of anime to be that kind of murderer. <laughs> we, can, we can diagnose we can diagnose people like Freudianly based on their fucking genre savviness. <laughs> <laughs> You've been watching anime with him. You should ask to join the anime club Orlando runs when you get a chance. Isn't he didn't he graduate? Yeah. And it's a school club? I think all Sal. of them have graduated at this point. Sal. This isn't about me. Shut up. Point is, Haas doesn't seem like the type to do things that way. I think we can rule him out. I... Alright, so we just ruled this... out every suspect. This is a friend group where they don't reliably even know whose family members have died. I don't yep. think I can trust their judgment about how well they think people... What they think people's, like hypothetical murder methods would be. <laughs> yeah. Like, 
No, completely. There's we're still we're, there's several bases to get through before we get to the to murder base. Like I don't, <laughs> I can I can believe them thinking that like, I can I can believe them collectively coming to the conclusion that Tyson, if he was going to murder someone, would probably just do it and not have a weird plan. But beyond that, I really struggle with the idea that like, oh no. Haas doesn't seem like the type. If he was gonna murder someone, he'd probably just slowly boil them. And like, what the fuck are you talking about? How, <laughs> where did you come to this conclusion? Did He's you do played Dangan Rampa, so yeah. if, 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 if he would construct a death game and, and a Rube Goldberg machine to kill them. Yeah, it's, it's like, very right, like, ah, oh, well, only this person can throw a baseball that well, so they must be the murderer. I'm like, what? <laughs> um, what? <laughs> I looked between the two of them, wondering where that left us. But, uh, but that rules everyone out, so... Maybe you just imagined it. Maybe it was an accident. It doesn't fucking matter, because it didn't happen. Just let it go. It'll be fine. I whined, and Sal put a hand on my shoulder. He needed the spot he held, by, held me by, waiting for Tyson to realize. So, uh... You will be fine, right? I think so? Well, good, I think. I'm gonna go hang with Haas, catch you later. Haas, it's crazy, they think you're the murderer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Ty chopped off. <laughs> Ty topped off his coffee and bailed, leaving Sal and I in the kitchen. Uh, Dave. Yeah? We didn't get very far, did we? What, are you done? I don't think so. Would anyone even have a reason to kill you? Not that I know of. We'd returned the axe, so I think that should be everything. Uh, unless it's a case of someone else, someone thinks I've done something else, someone thinks I've done, but I'd be open to talking it out first. We return the axe, so that should be everything. Did you think that somebody might have killed him for borrowing an axe? <laughs> I don't hang on a minute. What does he mean by that? I'm not sure yeah, what the axe I don't know. means. I wandered closer and tried to squeeze Sal as hard as I could. He returned in kind, making me squeak. Did. Did you just, uh, did, did I hurt you? Oh, no, it was just a little tired, a little tighter than I was used to. You're very, uh, firm. He's hugging Hyper Sal. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh... For oh my god, that is a face. Very goofy looking. <laughs> That's very funny. Just a weird way to introduce lots of information in the past five minutes. Now we know this sprite exists as well. <laughs> Was this just the update where they added a blushy face to every character? Because suddenly they're starting to get used, like, back to back. <laughs> Uh, cause we just had the Roswell blushy sprite, which I don't think had happened before either. Yeah. There was a, a loud rumbling in Sal's chest for all of a moment before he looked at me. It was cute. I liked it. Do it again. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Just he starts... <laughs> it's just his toy now. I laughed nervously, stepping away and resting back against the counter. Sorry, I just... It's just something that I must have picked up from my dad. Is squeaking? Is that a bad thing? I... Don't think so? It's just something I've always done, really. Well, I like it. It's very... Specific to you. <laughs> squeaking? 
Sal is discovering lungs exist today. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that makes you more special. Sometimes I'd rather just be normal, Sal. Sometimes it feels like everything would be easier if I wasn't any different from anyone else. Do you really think that? Are you divergent? That seems like a bit of a waste. You can do things I can't, and I can do things you can't. I, this conversation just feels odd just because I'm like, is... I don't think Dave is in any way known for being like an outcast or an outlier nope. or an unusual person in any way. <laughs> He's just some guy that drinks coffee and gets sleepy. Yep. That means that together, we can do extraordinary things. Like what? Follow me. Sal led the way towards the foyer before heading towards the back door. We stepped out onto the back deck and Sal wandered down the steps to stand upon the lawn. Okay, now look up. As I did so, all I saw were clouds moving slowly through the sky. What do the clouds look like to you? Two bears high-fiving? <laughs> Straining my eyes to make out shapes, it was hard to pick out anything specifically. Nothing? Nothing specific, at least, but I don't... I wasn't really all that good at making stories up for my sister, but she'd get me to tell her what the clouds looked like, and she'd weave together something. It rarely made sense, but that was part of the fun. So, what do you see? I watched Sal look upwards, scanning the sky with a frown. His eyes slowly widened before he shot me a quick look. Ah... Uh... Mostly just rabbits. But that's mostly because of them being white. Not sheep? Too pointy. We stared at each other for a bit in silence before I realized what Sal was implying earlier. Oh, a story about rabbits? The only one I think I remember is the one where that rabbit is always running late. Oh, I know that one. I like to imagine that his pocket watch was just running a little too fast. Is that why he was late to tea? They weren't late. They were celebrating their birthday, I think. I thought that was a different rabbit. Sal started to laugh, and it was contagious enough that I started to follow suit. I didn't expect it to make me feel better, but it did. We stood around for a while, just watching the clouds before Sal cleared his throat. We should probably head inside for lunch soon. Really? Have we been at it for that long already? Long enough. But still, I'm getting a little hungry as it is. That said, though, you Sal look like wanted... a snack. <laughs> 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 Sal wandered back over to me Stepping up to join me Back on the deck I liked spending time with you like this It wasn't exactly The happiest activity But I had fun Was it melancholic to be looking at the sky? Oh well Thanks for putting up with me for this, Sal. It does mean a lot. You were no bother. It's what friends do, right? Friends. Is that what we were? Whew. Part of me was feeling that maybe there was something else in there. Something that felt as if it was deeper than that. Maybe not necessarily best friends, as it wasn't the same thing I felt with Roswell and Orlando. Maybe some sort of mutual understanding of one another? 
Like, like friendship. <laughs> what the fuck are you saying, Dave? Just like, I don't know. Best friends is just not real. It's not a real classification. Like you can call someone that for funsies, but like it's not like there's a special, specific like meter that fills up and now they've achieved best friendhood. It's like, they're just talking about friendship here and mutual understanding. Come on, let's head inside. Sal wandered past me and headed inside, pausing when it, I wasn't directly behind him. I've been watching him move, noting how he shifted his weight for someone so large, right down to his stubby tail. Shaking myself from zoning out, I followed him through the open door, where we ran into the others. We all filed into the dining room before we continued into the kitchen. I don't know why we didn't just take the other corridor, but perhaps we were all just intending to make lunch without checking with anyone else? We all made for the kitchen to get started. As everyone moved around me, I figured I'd use the time to record what I had written down while it was still fairly fresh. Sal died in the freezer. My eyes glance over it, uh, over to it while I ate. We, we didn't get very far, and my pen was poised over the spot on the page where I'd prepared to take my notes. No one seemed to have been able to pull it off if we wanted to assume the best of everyone, which was fine, but it didn't solve the mystery of what I'd seen. The longer I stared, the less conscious of time I became until Orlando nudged me and gave me a funny look. Shaking my head at him, and shoveling what was left of the sandwich I was eating into my mouth, keeping my gaze averted. I excused myself and went to stand outside, drumming my fingers against the notebook as I held it. Worried that I'd made no progress, I wondered what the next step would be. Someone had to have killed Sal, right? It had to be someone. The more I thought about it, the more I was split between wondering what I'd overlooked and what seemed to be just an accident. Dropping my notebook, I clutched my ears, moved to grab the fur atop my head, and the moment I got purchase, I started to tug. It hurt, and part of me felt like I deserved this somehow, but it didn't last long. A strong grip held my wrists by whoever was standing behind me. Hmm. Don't do that. As I turned to look at Sal, I pulled my arms away from my head, slowly, the moment he'd let me go. Sorry. So oh, that's you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry. <clears throat> I felt like he was going to follow up with something, but he didn't. Instead, he opted to reach out for my face, lightly running his claws through the fur on my cheek. You barely ate lunch. Tyson asked me to check up on you. That's... That sounds like something Ty would do. Well, no updates. It's exactly the situation that I left off with you and both both, both Tyson and you. You were there. You, you know what, this, you know what I'm, I'm thinking about right now. I sighed and Sal pulled away. I felt silly, but it was hard to shake how much this was worrying me. It wasn't just Tyson. Dean asked me to, as did Roswell. I whined, rubbing my face harder. Hey, stop that. I know earlier didn't really help, but did you want to talk about it? Sal came to stand next to me, and... Much like earlier that morning, I sighed out, not sure where to place my thoughts. This is really bothering you, isn't it? What do you think, Sal? I've seen you dead once. I've seen Benson dead. I'm scared the next time I won't be able to stop it. He shifted next to me, clearly uncomfortable, but I continued anyway. <clears throat> If I never messed with the vault downstairs, this vacation would have probably gone a lot better. 
If you didn't, I'd be dead. I... He was right. And I felt guilty having said what I did. But his tone wasn't one of someone insulted or hurt over what I said. If anything, he was more reassuring than he should have been. I hope I thanked you for that, Dave. But what if Ty is right? What if I did imagine it? Then I wouldn't have woken up next to Orlando and given him a fright before checking in on you that morning. Whatever happened that night was enough to convince you and Orlando that I was in trouble and you were brave enough to intervene. So please don't give up. I can only imagine the burdens you must bear and wish I could shoulder them for you, but... He trailed off there, and we looked at one another, uncertain. Sal? Does it get easier? It shouldn't, but it does. But how? Why? What do you do to make it easier? I talk to Dean about things. I talk to Orlando about other things. It's mostly just a lot of talking if I normally get talked over. Did they just not notice? Orlando can be cute when he's babbling about something he's passionate about, so I don't mind. Sal chuckled, scratching the back of his head before continuing. Dean is less cute about it, but he apologizes eventually. And that doesn't upset you. I guess I took it for granted with Tyson. He normally just lets me ramble on and on about whatever until I notice and then laugh it off. He probably thinks you're being cute. You and him are close, so that makes sense to me. You think he likes that? I know I do. I backed away from the edge of the deck and looked to Sal, his expression fairly stoic. I half expected a smile after a comment like that. Sal? What do we do now? What did you want to do? For the most part, I feel doing more of what we did this morning isn't going to get us anywhere. Should... Should we just... Sal wandered forward and placed a hand on my head. How about we go for a swim? Really? Or you can use the hot tub. Or the conservatory. It doesn't bother me. The important part, though, is that I find it easier to relax while in the water sometimes. But what about... He placed a hand over my mouth, gently, cutting me off. It takes my mind off things, if only replaced by other thoughts. But taking a break from things is something you need. After some coaxing and heading back inside to get ready, Sal and I headed to the pool. Well... We're here. Come on, Dave. It's not that bad. I know. Sorry, just... I rolled my hands in the air. Not really sure what I wanted to say. Before I knew it, though. Hey! Sal lifted me up and was carrying me over his shoulder towards the water, stepping down into the water by steps. He set me down gently, and I flinched at the sudden temperature change. Here, now lay back. What? Sal eased me back so that I was floating. They supported me gently from underneath. Now close your eyes. Okay. When I closed my eyes, I realized that the main thing I could hear was the sound of the water moving it gently rippling and splashing around me. I felt Sal's hand support me under my head, keeping me above the water as I just let my mind wander. That's another phrase I could do with a control F, is just let my mind wander. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Breathing out a sigh, everything started to get quiet.
I could picture my living room. The sofa that sat underneath the, the front window was there, where I sat most days, waiting for Dad to come home. When Mom and Dad were both home, we'd all sit, there, we'd all sit next to each other, but most days it was just Dad and I watching TV. I thought of my bedroom, where I spent a lot of time when the house was empty. Or when it was empty and my mom and dad were downstairs being... loud. What? Oh no. Sometimes in a good way, sometimes in a bad way. I'd always know depending on who talked to me after. Talked to me first after. If it was in a good way, it was mom. If it was, if it was bad, then dad would normally come grab me and we'd go get ice cream. What? What is being loud in a good way? They're laughing or like watching a TV show, making a bunch of noise, cleaning just, the house, moving stuff around, yelling to each other about random stuff. It's just, I... <laughs> it's, it's weird to parse the idea because it's like... He can hear them being loud, but he can't tell if it's good or bad, and some and for some reason, whether it's good or bad always determines which parent will see will talk to him next. If they were being good yeah. loud, mom will always talk to me afterwards. I'm like, what is that ritual? What does that mean <laughs> in particular? The way that I'm imagining it is like it sounds like there's yelling downstairs or they're shouting to each other from across the house, and then all of a sudden mom comes upstairs and opens the door and says, Hey, what do you want for dinner? Like, just like, you yeah. know, going about house chores or something. And then when it's bad, it's like dad frustratedly walks upstairs and says, let's go get ice cream and to get out of the house. You know, that sort yeah. of thing. Strange to me. Thinking about it was making me uncomfortable and I started to come back to reality. Sal supporting my head and back was something I was becoming more familiar with until recent until eventually. I let out a gasp, eyes flying open and staring up at the sky. Dave, are you alright? You started shaking and... Our eyes met, and I croaked out a reply, pushing myself gently away to wade into the pool next to Sal. Yeah, just... some bad memories. What? Um... Okay. As I waited there, that sick feeling started to return. Sorry if this isn't helping. I just thought that clearing your head might help. Watching Sal's reflection in the water, I sighed out, tearing my gaze away to, to the side to look and... Oh, at nothing in particular. I'm not very good at this after all, am I? Feel like asking what could be the worst thing to happen isn't the right thing to do here, either. Right. With a sigh, Sal scratched his head. I blame Dean for this. Did you know he's my best friend? He's normally the one that would try to ground me like that. He'd say something like... What's the worst that could happen? Sun is still going to come out tomorrow, so if you want, we can go get burgers. Why burgers? Last time he said that, he was having a fight with his brother. Otherwise, it'd be pizza. If you want... We, oh, I don't know I said that. If you want, we can try doing that. I'm amused by the idea that, like, the, uh, that line is incomprehensible if we hadn't doubled back and found the other dialogue options about the FNAF jokes. Mm-hmm. What the... It's like, why burgers? Well, because they're fighting with his brother. And we're just staring at <laughs> him like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Going to get pizza? No, trying to figure out what's the worst thing that could happen. I quickly looked at him before looking away again, keeping my voice low. I'd say... 
<laughs> mm. Well. Quite an escalation. Or a de-escalation, if you greet them in order. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> getting yelled at, being forgotten, everyone dying. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Figure out what's the worst thing that could happen. <laughs> the worst thing that could happen is getting yelled at. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> uh, I mean... This is a story where the th like, <laughs> in a way, it's really goofy to be like, well, what's the worst thing could happen? Because like the premise of the game is that everyone's gonna die if we don't stop it, as far as I can <laughs> tell. So like literally yeah. that, that's the worst thing that can happen. <laughs> so like, you can't be like, oh well, we didn't solve the murder, but what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> the thing, the whole, th the premise. That's why we try to solve it. <laughs> Sal nodded slowly and placed a hand on my shoulder. Everybody dies, Dave. <gasps> Dad? Well, yeah, but I mean... I know what you mean, but you can't stop people from leaving before their time. You potentially can. Because you specified before their time. <laughs> Being that we're not inevitably doomed to die but that was their before their time death that's not that's the preventable one <laughs> I know what you mean but you can't stop people from the oh I'm sorry I thought this was new dialogue for a second I was like that's weird that it's repeating at least assuming natural causes anyway we're not assuming natural causes he said before their time <clears throat> I think you could do worse than that. Like what? Sal mu uh, muttered something under his breath. It took a few moments before he spoke again, and he looked me dead in the eye. Dave, the most precious thing to you is your friends, right? More than anything else, you care for them and think the world of them. I nodded, fidgeting. Right, of course. So, the worst thing... ...would be infighting. I don't know if that's worse than them all dying, so... Tyson against Roswell. Me against Dean. Any number of combinations. If it ever got to the point of outright antagonism towards one another, the worst that could happen would be excessive violence. <laughs> like you did. Right. Beating each other up would be pretty bad, so... I trailed off while I looked at Sal. He s said nothing to cut me off, but the stare he gave me implied that he meant something much worse. Dave, the worst thing that could happen for you would be your friends killing each other. Okay, so this, th Sal, this, this conversation is not therapeutic. This is not helping. <laughs> this is not, <laughs> this is not a good headspace to enter. Be it bloodshed or toxic relationships, them destroying one another, if not themselves, would be the death of you. I whined, clutching my head. Listen to me, Dave. Think about it rationally for a moment. Think about it carefully. Crab battle. <laughs> <laughs> How likely is it your friends are to massacre one another? That you're going to have to clean up slaughter caused by people you care about? What the fuck is this conversation, Sal? We need to stop meeting at the pool. It brings something out of you. You just see the, the phantom of your sister floating over the water and it just makes you say and do horrible things. You need to chill. <laughs> oh my god. My whining grew louder and I started to tug at my ears. Please, stop. I don't... Sal roughly grabbed me by the arms and pulled them down so they were locked in my sides. Dave, listen to me. How likely is that to happen? I stared at him, trembling, 
but remembering what he offered before, I opted to awkwardly collapse into him, and he took the hint to hug me tight. I'm sorry, but you need to realize this. We don't want to kill each other. Normal people don't want to kill each other if they're friends. So it's okay. I put my arms around him and, and whimpered as he stroked my back. There's not going to be a massacre, Dave. There's not going to be any mess that you're going to have to face, so don't worry. Bad end, bad end, bad end, bad end. <laughs> How do you know? Shall we go down the list? Roswell has a mouth on him, but outside of not having tact sometimes, he's harmless. Orlando, much the same, given that he's too worried about fights, ignoring that he's armed at all times with fire. Dean's strong, but caring, despite having Roswell's problem of little tact at times. Haas has some claws on him, but I get the impression he's just a kid and when things get heated. Tyson, nah. I don't think he'd resort to spilling blood unless you were in danger. When I didn't respond immediately, he sighed out, pulling me back and lifting my chin carefully so he can look at me. It didn't last long, but his next words came out like an unsure mumble. How about after dinner, we wander down to the vault and check that out? Why the vault? Why not now? The funny thing is that because... we've now been trained to know that vault means bad ending. Yep. Like, oh, time to go, time to go do our, visit the save point before the bad thing happens next. <laughs> yeah. Because that's where you put the password in to prevent it. I'm thinking maybe the password is going to be massacre. I'm just keeping that on deck. Nah, the password just wouldn't. Said it I don't so think many the, times. I don't think it would be introduced yet. Like, I mean, I we'll the, have to see. I think the password inherently <laughs> has no to be. There's no actual pattern. Well, I think the, uh, the pattern so far is that the password is in the bad ending. So it has mm -hmm. to happen after the vault, but before the resonate. Yeah. So after you calm down, you're going to go sit down in the hot tub and just unwind. He ran his claws through my fur, gently scratching the top of my scalp. I'll join you, so don't worry. It didn't take long to get to, from the pool to the tub, and the hot water did help. So much so that I didn't register Sal sitting next to me for a good while. The afternoon rolled by until I was getting into until it was getting time for dinner, and after a quick rinse off and heading back inside to get changed, we went for dinner. We filed into the dining room, and I watched as Tyson went into the kitchen. I went to go help Haas, but soon wandered into the kitchen. If Tyson was cooking, chances were that we that he wouldn't need both of us helping, so I took a seat and just waited. A couple of others were still standing, talking to one another, leaving me to my thoughts. It had been a long day, so I took the time to just zone out and think. Not that I didn't do enough of that in the hot tub, but I still had a lot on my mind. There was a lot of information to go through, there is not. And not a, lo a whole <laughs> lot of it made sense. I didn't think I'd really gotten anywhere, but for now, that was fine, right? They actually did like a pretty bad job of setting up, you know, like we were ostensibly here to uh, learn something, right? And we didn't really learn anything. In fact, we just, I, I mean, Dave, at least from his perspective, is now just more confused about who it could be and has successfully uh, narrowed down his list of suspects to absolutely no one. Yeah. <laughs> Which is just like, great. I guess uh, I guess your investigation has ruled that uh, you're a bad investigator. Good work, Dave. <laughs> he steeled himself for the investigation and then, uh, well. <laughs> <clears throat> it's not inherently bad for your characters to not know anything yet, but I do yep. feel like you can have them not know anything faster. <laughs> yep. Like, I don't think this comes down to us having tons of massive tangents or anything. I think it sincerely just is a lot of ink spilled over him continually not knowing anything to the point where he's constantly yes. 
then reflecting on how much he doesn't know over and over again, then talking about how much it was a long day full of things that happened which didn't really happen, and data that he doesn't really have, and then he's thinking again about the thinking, and then he keeps repeating the reactions to the investigation that didn't turn anything up, and you're like, okay, we could skip most of today, honestly. Yeah. Baby steps was, was where I needed to start, and any progress was good. When dinner was done, we were all seated in, we dug in. Earlier in the day, seeing all my friends like this gave me a great deal of stress, but having taken things into my own hands, I felt better about things somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> he stood in the kitchen with two other people and were like, uh, I don't know. And now he's like had a character arc over the course of today and feels completely different about seeing his circle of friends that he is equally unprepared to prevent the deaths of. But even with everyone looking happy, a doubt lingered. Something that I knew I'd at least get to address when we were all done. When dinner was done, I rushed upstairs to grab my notebook, then made a beeline for the room downstairs. Sal was hot on my heels when I made it back to the foyer. We headed down to the basement with Sal right behind me, to the point that the moment I stepped up to the vault door, he eased me back from it gently. Hold on. What's wrong? There's no rush. You're going to work yourself up again if you go charging in like that. But... I looked at the keypad. There was a large reinforced door next to it. This is my lifeline to keep people alive. Or at least so far it had been. What would it mean if I discovered something more right now? Let's start with something. Like what? Well, for starters, what were you planning on putting in there? Were you just going to guess? I don't think our investigation earlier helped. Chuckling, chuckling nervously, nervously. I don't know. My brain broke. <laughs> I dropped my gaze <laughs> to the floor. You have any ideas? Well, maybe. I thought back to talking with Oswin about how the vault worked, and looked back to the keypad. He said that the vault required trauma to work, and that some it had something to do with the one survival instinct. I'm just thinking, like, the words I put in may have traumatized me? Maybe you shouldn't put words like that in, then. Why? No, I mean, like, <laughs> they traumatized me in, uh, the future. No, wait, the, um... I scratched my head, not really understanding it after all. Maybe it was something I needed to ask Oswin about the next time we spoke. I don't get it. All right. Well, you have an arcade. Does that arcade have uh, <laughs> a switch? Can you download the nonary games <laughs> for some crack research? <laughs> That'd be very helpful. <laughs> if I'm being honest, neither do I. But it's just... I guess that's just how these things go. I gestured to the vault door. You don't always see things like this, so who knows what the rules are? We do. We know what the rules are. <laughs> the one who made it. I guess so, but that doesn't really help me out here. What happens if you get it right? Well, the last time I sort of blacked out and, uh, well, I had like a vision or a memory. You got knocked out? You're lucky you didn't fall again. over and hit your head. It could have been a pretty serious down here by yourself. I looked around the room, wondering if Ozan was watching even now. Maybe, but I don't know. You still going to try? There was no good answer I could have given, so instead I just focused on the keypad, breathing in deep.
Told ya. What? The moment I heard the chime, I smiled, sighing out with relief for all the moment before I realized what was about to happen. I blacked out, and as I began to fall, I could hear Sal call, call out to me, falling and crashing into something. What? <laughs> it was Sal. With an axe? And... Dean? I could hear him calling to me, but his voice was barely recognizable, as if he was talking to me while I was underwater. My head hurt, almost like a stabbing pain coming from deep within. I didn't understand. What had I just seen? Dave. When I opened my eyes, I winced against the light. But I was resting up against something, someone, and it took me moments to realize where I was. Sal sighed out, flexing his grip on my shoulder and shifting me slightly. What a relief. What happened? He didn't reply right away, watching me as I looked around the room. It was exactly how I remembered it from before blacking out. My notebook was on the floor and Sal had me in his lap and he sat against the wall. After you put in something, it uh, you wobbled for a bit and then started to fall. You've been unconscious for maybe five minutes? That long? It felt so instant. What did? As I thought back, I tensed up, starting to shake. The crocodile that I saw in the vision, the one and the one now weren't the same person. It's not as far as I could tell. What does that mean? This is what... This is what it was sort of like the past couple of times. I'd put in a word, black out, see a vision, and then wake up. But this time... What do you see? I whined quietly, unsure if I should say. Please. It was you. He tensed up, even if his expression didn't change. I... died? I shook my head, and the implication set in quick, his expression turning grim. Oh. Looking away, I tried desperately to explain, hoping that I hadn't upset Sal all the while trying to figure out what this meant. I don't know. I saw you, and Dean was there, and you had the axe, but you were covered in blood, and it looked like Dean was hurt, and... Dave, it's alright. Do you think we're in danger? I don't know, Sal. I just... He hushed me quietly, rubbing my shoulder. I can think of a couple reasons why I'd kill Dean. Oh! Much of my best friend he is. There's some things I'd kill someone over. Not to be specific to Dean, but more the identity of an individual I don't know of. Really struggling with the whole idea that they're best friends. Yeah, it doesn't oh. seem that way, and none of their interactions have seemed that way, and they haven't spent much time together, and, and not <laughs> once has has it ever been brought up that Sal and Dean are friends prior to this point. And now not we're talking about his, Dave how like he used to murder Dean. Yeah, and I... like, the bigger thing here is that Dean and, and Dave are supposed to have like a sort of will they won't they romance but not only has sal not brought it up really neither has dave and you think that the person who you have a will they won't they relationship with would talk sometimes about their best friend around you giving you context for a relationship and also setting up why maybe you getting super close to sal and maybe this being a boundary for him is like part of this relationship dynamic like it's very weird I'm also now like panicking because we got the we got the password right, but 
I think so. <laughs> Are here's we supposed the logic to have on... that password? Because like, shouldn't we see I the think bad so. endings? I'm like, no. Hey, I think I think what's gonna happen is is you know I think that was really telegraphed. First off, they mention they the whole scene was them saying, let's have this big emotional moment out of kind of nowhere. The whole I, let's just say this whole episode was building up to to like this stuff, right? And then basically it boils down to. Hey Dave, what's your worst possible traumatized fear? Which is exactly what Oz said. And then was like, it's a massacre. A massacre, Dave. Your friends would massacre each other, but there won't be a massacre. So you don't need to worry about a massacre, Dave. A massacre won't traumatize you. And I just went like, oh, okay, that must be the password. Because the other one was just hidden in plain text. And at least yeah, this one, if just, they're going to signpost it that hard. because it doesn't match any of the rules so far. I just think there is none. I think any rules we perceive are going to be completely... Maybe. Or I think it's if, just random. <laughs> for, for me, the thing that would be clever is if this was a heavily telegraphed password, mm -hmm. but actually, if you don't put in a password, nothing happens. And yeah. in fact, yeah. putting in Massacre causes a bad ending. <laughs> Sure, like that yeah. would be interesting because <laughs> at the moment we don't have a thing to resonate from to begin with so yeah. it's very strange to get to have a password uh, yeah I think I'd find that irritating because it also just but because we already know Dave doesn't really remember the other timelines so it's like it would be more just information here just for the player which is like annoying I'm very I, I also think that this like don't get me wrong the fact that I guessed the password correctly it doesn't feel like a victory. Like, it feels like uh, I'm frustrated that this is the case with this. I mean, you know it, what I mean? It seems like, like an effective deduction that you could feel good about. I just question, I'm just worried that it might be a mistake based on the previous, how yeah. the previous endings have worked. I'm worried that like, oh no, what if we weren't supposed to know it was Massacre yet? Because that would really fuck yeah. up the intended flow. Mainly because uh, you'll notice that they keep acknowledging other bad endings but in vague terms so like because of how the yeah. game works the game's basically been linear so far you have to get each of those bad endings to then get the password to then resonate and so as a result uh now dave's at a point where he keeps re acknowledging sal and benson's deaths he doesn't acknowledge acknowledge uh orlando's death because benson's death undoes the timeline where even orlando's death is even in the cards to begin with so it's like too many layers deep but like so like now is he going to be acknowledging an event as if we know what it is, but we never experienced it because we actually didn't. So it's a, it's a I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't might know. Go, might just go back later and do it and see what else happens. I guess regardless. Yeah. <laughs> I can think of a couple reasons why I'd kill Dean has such like. It's very hard to kill a crocodile. Yeah. I killed my sister energy. <laughs> I'm just like, I, what the, I mean, the fuck? if you want, if you want to just be safe, we can rewind toward to prior to the thing, put in the wrong password and then see what happens. Yeah. And see but, what happens. But I'm just not sure, you know. Oh no, Angie noise. A familiar angry beep sounded when I confirmed my entry. I stepped back from the keypad and put a hand to my mouth. There wasn't anything I could think of, which was a good sign, right? What's the matter? Nothing, I just- the same song's playing. <laughs> yeah. We have to just remember- we have to remember that we haven't used Massacre yet. I'm gonna yeah. put that in my notes. Well, what I really need to do is I just need to put a save right here. Oh, I can't now. Now I can't rewind? Wait. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you're locked mean? into the bad end. You're locked into the bad end, I think, okay. if you put in a password, so... Well, we can just load the previous save and hit fast, fast forward anyway. It's not difficult. Yeah. But since the bad ending will take us to Massacre, the Massacre resonates spot anyway, presumably. Yeah, I just, I do not know what to make of the idea that you can get... <clears throat> that this time you can get the password before I get to the vault. Looking down to the notepad, the notebook in my hands, I wonder if there was some clue here I missed. 
Something that had overlooked, but it was too late now. Maybe I expected the worst for no reason? The worst, they mean. <laughs> Sal, uh... Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess that is off. Sal rumbled, wandering closer to put a hand on my head. Maybe, but you got to see it through to the end. Do you feel any better? I'm going to kill everyone, Dave. Me. A little. I just hope... Well... Sal tilted his head, looking at me curiously. What do we do if I just messed up? I don't think it's healthy to think like that. None of this is your fault to begin with, you know? Sure, but... Once more, Sal put a hand over my muzzle. For whatever reason, he'd taken to doing that lately, and... I narrowed my gaze at him, suspicious. Not that it wasn't effective, just... strange. No buts. Let this be a good thing. You're clever and determined to do the right thing. But even superheroes need some time off. The world isn't constantly under siege, Dave. We're on a literal vacation. He eased yeah. off, taking a step back. <laughs> You're so, so overworked ask from you the way again. that you do one thing a day. Do you feel any better? Yeah. Yeah. I do. Good. Now, come on. We've both had a full day, so it's probably about time to get some rest. Or at least have some tea. I pulled a face at the prospect of leaf juice, causing Sal to chuckle. Oh, Dave, it's really not that bad. But it's made with leaves. And what do you think coffee is made out of? Uh, beans? Oh. Mm. Well, now you've got me curious. So? Beans. <laughs> I shot him a look, confused, but he continued anyway. So you're headed up to bed now. If that's what you're making me do, probably. Out of nowhere I yawned, using my notebook to scratch my face. You're tired. I mumbled something incoherent at him and shuffled towards the door. Hmm. It'll be interesting to see what comes of this mess. I do want to see people die. That's just fun. I just, I just want to yeah. see the bad endings anyway, so I'm, the promise of a bad ending is at least appealing. <laughs> you heard it here first. Keith Ballard wants to see people die. Yeah, famously. It's fun, he said. That's a box quote. 